Non, qui c'è. 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 Thank you and good afternoon, Mr. President, Council, Civil Parties, and Mr. this is a criminal trial, and I would like to begin my questions by focusing on the crimes charged in this case. It may be familiar, but among the crimes charged, ដឹងតែឧកតកម្មមួយចំនួនបណ្ដោះបណ្ដាក់ក្នុងចំណោមនោះគ្រឹទ្ធកម្មទាំងអស់នឹងគឺមានមនុស្សសុខិតការធ្
And in French, begins at the bottom of សូនប្រមួយប្រមួយពំពលប្រមួយបួនសូនប្រមួយប្រមួយពំពលសូនប្រមួយបួនសូនប្រមួយប្រមួយពំពលសូនប្រមួយបួនសូនប្រមួយប
there was no closeness of relationship between the unfriendly was the issue of Vietnamese cooperation with uh, Vietnam Americans missing in action an issue during this period of time? Uh, it's an issue that has been discussed in the past and discussed was there also a dispute about Vietnamese claims that the uh, Nixon administration had promised them a massive amount of aid to conclusion of the peace treaty that was not delivered? Yes, it's, it's true. There was a dispute a major dispute between the Two countries, the United States and the Socialist Republic of Vietnam, over the delivery of aid, which was not delivered. Um, that was a matter of contention between the two countries. You were asked this morning about DK relations with Thailand. I would just like to bring to your attention another document in this case, Actually, I'll skip that because I only have the English ERN and I think Council wants us to have the Khmer and French ERN, so I'll pass it to I'll come back to that perhaps later. Just briefly. Sir, one of the points you write on page 98 of the book in English, ERN 01-0067-65, and on to the next page, is the following. He said that, according to the Deputy Military Commander of Vietnam's Province, during April and May 1977, the Khmer Rouge forces had carried out systematic attacks upon Vietnamese border villages, making it impossible for Vietnamese peasants to work there. The Vietnamese side claimed that it then offered to settle the border question peacefully with the Khmer Rouge, but the offer was refused. According to the Khmer Rouge, according to the Vietnamese, the Khmer Rouge is then concentrated up to two divisions on the border adjacent to Tain Nhien. And in the middle of May, these forces undertook massive attacks upon Vietnamese territory. To recall Yes, I do. Can you tell us um, what you know about what was the reason the Khmer Rouge carried out the attack, if you have had no any reason. Can you tell us what you know I don't know of any reason why they carried out the attack. Can you tell us what you know about the reason they carried out the attack? One can speculate on what the motives were, but I don't know of any objective uh, situation or conflict emanating from the Vietnamese side which might have led to that attack. Were there, you, you, you quoted reports of your own writing, the writing of Nayan Chanda, the other academics about these attacks by Khmer Rouge forces into Vietnam. Are there similar reports about Vietnamese attacks before April 1977, not speaking about the island into Cambodia? No, I'm not aware of any such report. Sir, are you familiar, changing topic a bit, with an organization known as Fulrum, 
tiếng tiếng đang full auto yes that looks cool thế nè chấm đi bạn do you know if the full row receives support from the ta được đăng thà full auto từ từ cả com từ pi bên pi khai cả home thế yes i think they may have nè chấm đi bạn nhầm đăng let me read to you from a book by Nayan Chanda. He arranged in English 0019282. Page 282. Chanda wrote, the success is achieved by his men in destroying Vietnamese villages. And massive civilians surprised raids since April 1977. And the lack of Vietnamese response might well have boosted Pol Pot's confidence. The fact that Hanoi faced a brutal crisis in the south and 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 Received materials support from the British, which he used to challenge Vietnam. Which he used to challenge Vietnam. I think that um, belief that there was some kind of um, there was some kind of internal problem in Vietnam. May have influenced Pol Pot. Um, however, I, I suspect that um, he was behaving in a rather paranoid way in response to what he thought were enemies within the party. And attributing attributing Potential opposition, actual or real, or imagined in Vietnam. Therefore, trying to show a reaction to what he perceived as threats. Um, Mr. President, short observation. Um, also, on behalf of my um, national colleague. Chanda has been translated to Khmer completely. There's a full Khmer translation of Chanda, so I appreciate if you also get the Khmer again. Mr. Kope, you are aware that we have given you a lot of leniency when it came to references. Now, I have not yet to talk to you saying, but please expect to be helped to the same thing. Mr. Kope, I have not yet to talk to you saying, but please expect to be helped to the same thing. But I have been handed some of these e-rims. First, the first quote I gave about Nunchia, I apologize for S21. In French, it is 0849. For it. Chanda, what I just gave to my ear is 01415. That's the same ear end, so I'm going to have to double check that. We'll double check that. Sir, I'd now like to ask you about these attacks in April and May from the information of your research and what you learned from China and other sources. Did these Khmerouge attacks reach the Vietnam Foreign Office and the concentrate only on the military targets and civilian targets or were these attacks targeted at the civilian targets? Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je sais que nous avons 
euh, un expert hein, qui dépose et que, euh, a priori, on, on peut parler de beaucoup de choses. Euh, en revanche, là, euh, le thème que va aborder M. le procureur, il s'agit des inscriptions de l'armée euh, du Kampuchea démocratique sur le territoire vietnamien et expulsion euh, du procès 02 par 2. Donc, euh, là, nous demandons à l'expert euh, d'avoir... Euh, de donner des informations à la Chambre sur des faits qui ne sont pas inclus dans la procédure dont j'objecte à la question. Your Honours, a good part, perhaps the principal part as I understood of the defense examination of this witness was asking why Vietnam invaded Cambodia. So the commission ອັນຕະມະເພາະສາຈໍາປູປະຊາຊົນຊິວເວຍຽດນາມກໍຊິຈໍານັດສໍາຄັນຫນ່ວຍພ້ອງໄດ້ບາດອັນຕະມະເພ
Um, his experiences were reported first by but Chanda and uh, then I found evidence to support it uh, in the Soviet archives. So in your book, at URN 01761, to Tainin, where you said he witnessed many ruined buildings and many dead and burned people, mainly women and children. Now, was Chanda Dura, Kandura Dura, allowed to report on that at that time? Uh, I object to this question because the prosecution Prosecution seems to suggest that this evidence is about In fact, I did not give the dates of that uh, visit, but I can do that. And it begins on page, on this page I quoted, 0101766, you wrote that on September 27, 1977, Pol Pot openly declared the existence of the CPK. The message was sent after hundreds of Vietnamese civilians had been massacred in Khmer Rouge raids on September 24. So I think that is important to point out. And thank you, Council, for that. The police are actually talking about raids in September 1977. Yes, that is correct. So these are separate from the rates that we talked about previously in April. Can you tell us uh, how did Kandor Dura get to observe the aftermath of those attacks? So what happened about his report? Again, that, that's incorrect. There were also uh, apparently attacks in February, March 78. So again, uh, uh, I appreciate that there are so many attacks uh, by the Khmer Rouge into Vietnam that one could be confused, but it appears from the order that you gave this in your book that these are related to the September attacks. But I, Professor, can you comment on that? Yes, initially the uh, Hungarian journalist to whom you refer uh, took notes and photographs uh, and then the Vietnamese asked him not to talk about it. Uh, they had photographs and notes were confiscated and they were given back later. And he was allowed to write In fact, you write on the next page the one that I mentioned that um, Yet on October 1st, no, the situation totally changed. The Vietnamese demanded that Dura hand over all his materials. Uh, At the end of the paragraph, you say the Hanoi uh, leader suppressed uh, the evidence until the uh, end of 1977, when the journalists' notes, films, and other materials were returned. So is it clear to you that you were talking about a visit in late September 1977 by 
Yes, it seems to me that this was uh, fairly clearly a reference to events that took place in September 1977. Now, Nayan Chanda writes about his own visit to border areas in March 1978. And to the next page. In Pumai, two pages beginning 00191555, and in French again two pages 00237083. Chanda wrote, writes about his uh, March visit place after place along the border. We saw villages in ruins, abandoned paddy fields, and hundreds of graves. From survivors, we heard unprompted stories of medieval atrocities. There was no longer any doubt in my mind about the reality of this bitter conflict that the Vietnamese had kept out of the public view for so long. So a couple of questions about that. First, can you explain why Vietnam would have wanted to suppress, for at least a time period, the evidence of the Khmer Rouge crossing their borders and committing atrocities against Vietnamese civilians? I think that they may have thought that this was something that needed to be resolved off the record, off the public record, uh, that they may have believed that uh, this was something which was at the behest of local commanders, and therefore waited to see whether the central authorities in Phnom Penh would rein them in. Um, I believe that the Vietnamese did not want to get involved in a conflict with the Cambodians uh, over these matters at that time, the public. Uh, and would re they would resolve it perhaps uh, quietly and secretly. What does it say to you about their intention to negotiate Vietnamese intention? I think uh, the Vietnamese were intending to negotiate uh, to, uh, to try and stop these attacks. Now you were asked this morning about whether a few selected statements were read to you, whether those selected statements were reasonable. I want to ask you about the actions of the attacks into Vietnam committing atrocities against civilians, in your opinion. Can you tell us, was that reasonable? Let me repeat the question. Yes, could you repeat the question, please? This morning, you were read a few selected excerpts of statements by DK leaders and asked if those statements in isolation were reasonable. I'm asking you whether the actions of the DK authorities in, in these attacks across the border where civilians were specifically targeted were reasonable in your view. I don't believe that attacks on innocent civilians were reasonable. No. You said it might have been. You don't know whether or not this was a local initiative. Have you ever reviewed telegrams from the DK's ambassador in Hanoi to Pol Pot and other leaders about Vietnamese complaints about these attacks? I don't recall. Perhaps we may have time to review some of those.
There's another person who's written about these attacks, and that is Kusum Pan. In document E3, Thank you. In document E3, 18, E3 slash 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 about the, these attacks after he surrendered in the late 1990s. And specifically talking about the late April 1977 attacks on Tin Bien village of Anjiang province. He said from sources after 1979 he learned that well, he says about attacks on villages in Tainin and Ha Tiang provinces at the end of September. The events, the events recounted are irrefutable. There is no doubt that the Khmer Rouge made forays into Vietnamese villages along the border, committing appalling crimes against Vietnamese civilians. Would you agree with Q Sun Pan that the evidence was, is irrefutable? Yes, I agree. I'd like to ask you about something you wrote on page 98 of your book. He said that in April 1977, on the occasion of the second anniversary of the liberation of Phnom Penh, the government controlled media in Hanoi offered congratulations and praise for the DK regime. But this goodwill gesture reaped no beneficial consequences for Vietnam. The Khmer Rouge deliberately chose the second anniversary of the Vietnamese communist conquests of South Vietnam to leave a bloody calling card. And then you talk about those April 30th attacks. Did you come across evidence that the Vietnamese authorities were trying to lower the tension in the conflict to take the conflict from the battlefield to negotiations? I think that was true in 1977. You also wrote on the same page that on September 27th, 77, uh, the Pol Pot openly declared the existence of the Communist Party of Kampuchea. The Central Committee of Vietnam sent a message of congratulations, publicly expressing its joy. He said, interesting, interestingly, this message was sent after hundreds of Vietnamese civilians had been massacred in raids on September 24th. Is this further evidence of what you're talking about? Evidence that in 1977, even as late as September 77, the Vietnamese were hoping that the conflict could be de-escalated and negotiated. Yes, that's my opinion.
There's another document I would like to, to ask you about. This is E3 slash 738. And it's, I guess it's, sorry, this is your, your book. The year end is 0100768. And in this particular passage, you're describing a discussion on 6th of October, 77, between Le Duan and the Soviet ambassador to Hanoi about Vietnam's reaction to the 24th September massacres in the quote, after noting the massacres of Vietnamese women and children by the Khmer Rouge, Le Duan noted that the Vietnamese army had the capability to route the Kampuchean army quickly. And then you go on to say, Vietnam's response, according to Le Duan, was to display patience and attempt to find a peaceful resolution of all questions with Kampuchea. First, would you agree with Le Duan? Was he telling the truth when he said Vietnam, Vietnam had the capability to rout the DK forces quickly? Yes, I agree. Okay, we'll come back a little bit, go into a little bit more depth on the disparity in forces. But again, uh, do you believe Le Duan was still exhibiting here in the 6th of October, 77, the willingness to try to reach a peaceful resolution with Democratic Kampuchea before resorting to force? Yes, I agree. On page 102, and that's ERN 01001769, you wrote that on December 31st, 1977, the government of the Democratic Kampuchea announced that it was temporarily Thank you. You wrote on this page 102 that on December 31st, 1977, the government of Democratic Kampuchea announced that it was temporarily severing diplomatic relations with the Socialist Republic of Vietnam, pending the withdrawal of the, quote, aggressive forces, unquote, of the SRV from the, quote, sacred territory of democratic Kampuchea, it said, you, you wrote that Q Sam Han, on behalf of the Cambodian government, read a speech at this time on Vietnamese aggression. Now, putting this in context, the severing of relations at the very last day of the year 1977, something had occurred before that. There was a Vietnamese attack into Cambodia. Yes, that's correct. And can you tell us a little bit about this attack? The uh, Vietnamese uh, launched an offensive which led to the capturing of a number of Khmer Rouge soldiers and they also took with them some civilians uh, into Vietnam. Do you know whether or not the civilians, whether any civilians voluntarily 
went with them as opposed to being forcibly transported out of the incredible country to Vietnam. Uh, as I recall, the, the civilians voluntarily relocated with the Vietnamese to Vietnam. Let's talk a little bit more in a little bit more uh, depth about this attack. Perhaps preface it, let us talk about the uh, forces, the relative strengths of the forces between the two countries. On page 103 of your book, at ERN 01001770, you wrote that there are certain objective military facts that should have been strongly influencing the decisions of the leaders on both sides. First was the huge disparity in the size of the armed forces on each side. In 1977, the armed forces of DK were estimated to total 70,000. The armed forces of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam were estimated to total 615,000. Can you comment on the, how the various armies, the relative strength in terms of numbers, quality of weapons, quality of uh, experience, and quality of generalship? Yes, the uh, Vietnamese uh, had a far more uh, battle-hardened and experienced soldiers, commanding officers, uh, as well as equipment, uh, and uh, also an air force. Uh, Cambodia had almost no air force. The Vietnamese did have a small air force. Um, the tanks. The had only some light tanks. The Vietnamese had a large number of tanks, more modern tanks. Uh, the, the, the disparity of force was, was, was uh, massive in both quality and quantity. And I'm not sure uh, you don't now recall the numbers, so let me read what you wrote on that same page. You said the armed forces of DK constituted a light infantry. It, it, it included a few light tanks, some 200 armored personnel carriers, and virtually no air force. By contrast, the armed forces of the SRV included some 900 medium and light tanks, and a 12,000 person air force with 300 combat aircraft, including one light bomber squadron and eight fighter ground attack squadron of 150 aircraft and eight fighter ground squad, attack squadron 150 aircraft. Um, at that time, where had Vietnam obtained its weapons? At that time, most of its weapons would have come from the Soviet Union. And what some some light weaponry may have come from China. I would uh turn certainly the air force and uh, uh, heavy tanks would, were certainly uh, and what happened to the arms of the South Vietnamese government that had been defeated, which I would imagine were mainly supplied by the United States? Can you comment upon how much quantity and quality of weapons the regime in Hanoi had obtained following the victory in South Vietnam? Uh, the, yes, the North Vietnamese had obtained a substantial percentage of the weaponry, which I'm sure um, uh, an overwhelming majority of the weaponry that was in the hands of the South Vietnamese Army in 1975. Um, although some of these weapons were provided to the Soviet Union, so that the Soviet Union could use them to support national liberation movements as they were so in other parts of the world uh, without being traceable to the Soviet Union. 
Um, the same thing, by the way, happened in, uh, after the Korean War. The uh, weapons uh, captured from uh, Allied forces were some of them were used. Now, in talking about that late 77 offensive, Nayan Chanda writes in Brother Enemy, that's E3 slash 2376 at ERN, my 0019-539, and in English at 00192391. He said that he wrote that the Vietnamese purpose was, as Huang Tung later explained to me, quote, first to chase them from our territory and then deal a heavy blow to their divisions, to make them realize that we are not passive as they have assumed, and to tell them that they have to choose the other solution negotiations. The first of the Vietnamese objectives was achieved almost effortlessly. Vietnamese forces, backed by artillery barrages had gone into Cambodia like a knife through soft butter. Do you agree with Chanda? And can you expand it all upon his view that the results of the battle were one-sided? The Vietnamese easily were able to overcome any DK resistance? Yes, uh, I agree. It was uh, easy for the Vietnamese to achieve their military objectives in Cambodia at that time. And uh, by, by, uh, the, the Democratic Cambodian forces were in no position to, stage to wage a conventional war against the Vietnamese. Their only option was guerrilla war, which they did not pursue. Can you tell us who is Huang Tong and what you make of his statement that the purpose was to chase them out of the territory, make them realize we are not passive, and to tell them they have to choose negotiations? I'm sorry, I don't recall Huang Tung and his status. Um, but uh, yes, look, I think that uh, they were trying to teach them uh, the, the Khmer Rouge lesson. They were acting uh, in order to pursue a, a deterrent policy, you might say, uh, against the Khmer Rouge, uh, rather than defeat them completely make them suffer sufficiently that they would then cease and desist or else negotiate. Just to remind everyone of what you wrote on page 102, 01001769, he said the decisive military penetration of the Parrot's Peak region of Cambodia by the Vietnamese army was initially halted short of the city of Sve Rang after the Vietnamese had inflicted a major defeat upon their enemies. In early January, the Vietnamese withdrew from Cambodia, taking with them thousands of prisoners as well as civilian refugees. With their forces only 24 miles from Phnom Penh, the Vietnamese could have easily captured the capital city and occupied all of Cambodia. But as they explained to a Bulgarian journalist later, this was impossible for them politically. The purpose of their offensive seems to have been to inflict damage upon and thus temper Khmer Rouge aggression. Does this remain
Yes, this remains my view. Was the attack successful in getting the DK to alter its behavior and to negotiate with the Vietnamese? No, it was not. Did attacks from, Vietnam, from Cambodia into yes. Vietnam continue? Yes. 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 I mentioned earlier some telegrams from the UK ambassador in Hanoi. Are you familiar, sir, with a man named Heng Sok Kheng? It's K-H-E-A-N-G, alias Chien, who was the DK ambassador to Hanoi. Uh, no, sir, I'm not familiar with him. Uh, just for the parties in your honor's benefit, record E3-7-2-7-0. This is an S-21 record at English 0078454. Which indicates that Heng Sok Kiang, alias Chien, ambassador to Hanoi, entered S21 on the 5th of February 1978, and he was executed on the 31st of December 1978. He has the Appears in the OCIJ list as number one two nine two seven. Sir, in at fifteen June nineteen seventy-seven. This is E three slash seven eight. The English is 018278. Says, quote, on 14 June 1977, starting at 8 p.m., the company of our forces committed aggression across their border over a length of 40 kilometers from Sa Sien to Dung Chit. I should explain, this is what the ambassador is reporting the Vietnamese complaint to him about. So he's saying the Vietnamese said, he said, our forces with 105 called in as auxiliary support carried out a coordinated storm attack against the security posts, slaughtering and torching residences bringing about enormous casualties. I'm going to ask you about all of these together. So the next one is E3 slash 830. It's at English คือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือคือ
ពីកម្ពុជាដើម្បីបញ្ជប់ការបង្ហូរជាមនឹងរក្សាចំណងមិត្តភាពជាមួយកម្ពុជាអាណាចារ្យថាសាទូលេខ 62 Another telegram dated a And in French, zero zero three eight six two five seven. It's talking about again a protest from Sun, saying that since early August, Cambodian army has invaded such provinces as Angyang, Long An, Thai Ninh. Cambodian army has killed or burned down or caused great damage to human lives and properties. ទេសម្បាយបំផ្លាញតសម្បាយយ៉ាងច្រើនមនុស្សដល់អ្នកត្រូវបានសម្លាប់រួមបញ្ជូនទាំងសិទ្ធិ៍ត្រីមិនមរ
mạnh hai năm cao bìm sơ mây mê tê bì lươn chia bàn xu sạ xây nê ông bì cao bì bà hà hay có mân bình cao chấm tố khăn mê tê bì kê xâm phôn thạc kai vi xa lập hiếp nữ lạ kê thà chụp cực tạc cầm nê mân bèn chia vi xa lập hiếp nê xa nông rừng tế bàn tay vi chê chùm nê nhà rộng bò nê chùm nê nhà rộng nê tẹ tương tạc nâng tùm nê tùm nâng đồ bò Việt Nam nâng cầm bà chê hai năm mùa hai đồ bây đai Việt Nam chia liên biên Campuchia là khi nông chia năm trong chất sắp bằng bí nâng trong chất sắp bằng bầy được Thật ta sợ xây rụng này ai nên dìa ý được cầm bằng ai chẳng lại ông bì xa từ rồi lấy nên cái thật chẳng hết bằng khi nhầm ai có sợ đọc được chân hay ai thà có lộp mơ tờ lưu bằng xa bỏ xù viết hơi ai chưa bật tế ai có xa cả tù đồ bộ Việt Nam nào mới được chân hay cái thật còn ai chẳng lại bằng ក្តារកត់មិនបានឃើញចម្លោយធ្វើតបណាមួយរបស់កម្ពុជាប្រជាធិបតេយ្យឆ្លើយតបទៅនឹងវៀតណាមទៅថាវាជាការឆ្លើ
By June 1978, three-quarters of a million Vietnamese had fled their homes near the border, seeking refuge elsewhere in Vietnam. Meanwhile, DK officials had refused to even accept delivery of a copy of the Hanoi 5 February peace do you understand from the Phnom Penh radio announcement that in March Vietnam did not have the strength to attack us and instead continued to attack them? Is that consistent with what you know about the behavior of DK that they were Uh, yes, that's consistent with but what I know. Thank you. 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 Thank